Uh, in this video, we are going uh, to discuss uh, uh, the stratified sampling, the cluster sampling, and the uh, multi-state sampling, uh, which are the probability methods that uh, remain uh, to be discussed. We start with the stratified sampling, which in, in this type of sampling, the population is subdivided into strata. In other words, that the, the parent population is formed of strata, of uh, different strata. Thus, for the sample to be representative, it should be drawn from each stratum, so that it will be representative for the parent population. Uh, if the sample is drawn, for example, uh, from the population without considering the stratification, without considering the strata of the parent population, then the whole sample may be drawn from one stratum than uh, all strata, and thus it will be, uh, it will not be uh, representative for the parent population. It's preferred to be used when the parent population is subdivided into strata so that you can guarantee that the sample is representative. Uh, marked variation are existing between the strata and the subgroups, and in such situation, it will be very interesting to have the sample, uh, sample that is representative for each stratum. And uh, maybe the investigator is especially interested to reflect such variations in the sample. First, to stratify the steps is first to stratify the sampling frame. To divide, uh, for example, the sampling frame into males and females if you are using gender as your stratification variable. Each uh, element should be assigned to one uh, stratum. And then the second stage is to take a random sample or systematic sampling from each group. There are actually, there are actually two different types of stratified uh, sampling, which are uh, the first one, which is commonly uh, used, which is called the proportional stratified sampling, in which you must make sure that the subsamples, for example, the samples of males and females, are proportional to their sizes in the population. Uh, the second type of stratified sampling is called the disproportional stratified sampling, in which case the subsamples are not proportional to their size in the parent population. For example, if a researcher is intending to uh, study the prevalence of smoking among medical students, for example, in a, a faculty of medicine and anywhere, uh, the estimated sample size, for example, is uh, 384, and the total number of the students is 850. So uh, now the question, how the sample will be uh, drawn, certified sampling. Uh, the population is subdivided into strata, for example, if you're talking about the faculty of medicine, then you have about five strata, first year, second year, up to fifth year, for example. Then it is more logic to draw a sample with the same representation at the parent population. If the researcher draws simple random sam sample, for example, then uh, then uh, he will end, with, uh, uh, end up with a sample that is not representative for the various strata of the population. And for example, he may uh, draw the whole sample from various year or second year or fifth year, then the sample will not be representative for the parent population. And thus, the generalizability of the results obtained uh, will be uh, illogical. The following steps are to be followed. For example, obtain the number of medical students in each class, in each stratum, and then you divide the number of the student per stratum by the total number of the students and then multiply the sample size in order to obtain the proportion of the sample to be drawn from uh, the stratum. This is called proportional to size uh, technique. And then to draw the sample from each stratum, we can use a simple random sampling or as described before, or uh, so that we can end up uh, with proportional stratified uh, sample. Also, it's possible to use systematic sample method to draw simple uh, random sampling from each stratum. Now we talk about the cluster sampling, and the cluster sampling refers to sampling methods that has the following properties. The population is divided into N groups, for example, called the clusters, which could be uh, blocks or uh, residential blocks or geographical uh, locations or hospital, whatever it is. The researcher randomly selects 
and cluster to include the sample. <coughs> we can, we have here uh, an important uh, reference that you can uh, see, which is the HB uh, Star Trek. They have important uh, uh, information about or description about the cluster sample. Then the number of observation within each cluster M1 is known and M is equal to M1 plus M2 plus M3 plus Mn, uh, etc. Each element of the population can be assigned to one and only one cluster. There are two types of cluster sampling, which is one stage uh, cluster sampling. All the elements within the selected cl clusters are included in the sample. Two stage sampling, a subset of elements within selected uh, clusters, are randomly selected for inclusion in the sample. Cluster sampling generally provides less precision than either the simple random sampling or stratified sampling. And this is the main disadvantage of the cluster sampling uh, method. Uh, when to use the cluster sampling? Cluster sampling should be used only when it is economically justified, when reduced costs can be used to overcome uh, the losses of precision, as we have mentioned, in comparison to uh, simple random sampling and systematic sampling. Um, this is most likely to occur in the following situations. Uh, constructing uh, a complete list of the population element is difficult and costly or even impossible to get uh, such a uh, uh, list of population. Then we, have, we resort to use the cluster sampling in such situation. And all the population is concentrated in natural clusters, such as city blocks, residential blocks, schools, hospitals, and so on. For example, uh, to conduct uh, personal interviews of operating room nurses, because we are interested to have their, for example, knowledge and attitude and practices as regards infection control, it might make sense to randomly select a sample of the whole hospitals in one geographical area as a first stage of cluster sampling, and then to interview all the operating uh, room uh, staff at that hospital. The main difference between cluster sampling and stratified sampling is that in cluster sampling, the cluster is uh, treated as a sampling unit. And uh, while in stratified sampling, the selection is carried out uh, based on the elements within the strata. Uh, lastly, we'll talk about the multi stage uh, sampling. And uh, this is a type of uh, sampling in which uh, the parent population is divided into large units. For example, the whole country or state from which a first state sample is drawn randomly. Then a second state sample is drawn from those sample units selected in the first uh, stage. And uh, this process of dividing the population into smaller units can be used continuously to create as many stages as desired. This sample seems to be appropriate for very large uh, communities. Uh, for example, if you are uh, carrying a study, for example, for the whole Sudan, if we talk about um, any uh, country or uh, Khartoum state, for example, or then these are subdivided, for example, into local administrative units and administrative units are subdivided into localities and the localities are subdivided into uh, popular committees, for example. So you, you, you carry the, the, the sample size for different uh, stages so that it will be uh, representative for the uh, study. Thank you very much.